Hey guys, my name is Miska and welcome to Overwatch Central. So, back earlier this year we made a video called Conquer Your Rank. This was a video going over each and every skill tier, all the way from Bronze all the way up to Masters, not Grandmasters I believe, providing useful tips and information about every single tier, in an attempt to create a video that would be useful for everyone, or at least everyone playing ranked and in these different skill tiers. Today we are going to do a very similar thing, but in this one we're actually going to have more of an overview. In Conquer Your Rank 2.0, we've been wanting to cover these stats for a while and conquer your rank 2.0 seemed like a good time to do it. Essentially what we're going to be doing is looking at pick rate for every single hero throughout every single tier, see how it changes throughout the different tiers and based on that hopefully give you some useful information that might help you in your games. Some of the stuff in here will make more sense and will be more obvious than other stuff but this is mainly a video to present these stats, translate them into a video to hopefully give you guys some useful information. Right let's get started with offense heroes. To begin with here we have Genji and Tracer. As you can see straight away, their graphs are fairly similar. The reason as to why these graphs look like this is because both of these heroes are very versatile, but more importantly, have a very high skill cap. As you climb every tier, better and better players will play these heroes even better throughout the ranked ladder. It takes no genius to figure this out, but what I really want to highlight here is just the fact that if you feel like you are stuck in gold or even silver, just playing Genji and Tracer because they are meta is not a solution. I'm sort of calling ourselves out here, but we talk a lot about meta on this channel and many other people do on other Overwatch channels, and it's important to highlight what meta means. And in this case Genji and Tracer are very strong in the current meta, so to say, but in certain skill tiers it's important to look past that. Moving on here, I want to talk about how Farah and Reaper are looking here. So as you can see, they're sort of the opposite to Genji and Tracer in a way that they sort of scale downwards. Sure, it's not as big of a peak, or as big of a loss rather, when you come up into the higher skill tiers here, but you can definitely see here that in Gold and Silver, Farah and Reaper both perform fairly well, in the way that they are picked a lot, played a lot, and also when looking at win rates, do well in these tiers. This is the sort of stuff that is important to analyze if you feel like you are stuck at a lower skill tier, or even if you're stuck in Platinum and diamond and you want to climb, because whilst certain heroes do counter other heroes in Overwatch, you can also use this sort of information to your advantage to play something that might just give you a bit of an easier time in that particular skill tier. I've used this a lot, and I've definitely used certain heroes and certain skill tiers to climb through those. We're probably gonna get back to that later in this video because it is definitely something that this sort of topic revolves around a lot, but without further ado I do want to get on to the next role so we don't get stuck with these graphs for too long. The next category is defense hero use. Now the main thing you're gonna see here is that these heroes are just used a lot less. Whilst that is something that is important to know, the main thing we're looking at here is how the graphs scale and not how big they are in terms of overall usage. So let's just have a look at the standout one here, Junkrat. Now you might see this and go, oh well Junkrat must be fantastic in bronze, he must be such an amazing hero to play in bronze and silver and must just dominate these tiers. Now this is not entirely right. Junkrat is a very fun hero to play, but there's no doubt that he is hard to control. He just naturally can't be as consistent as other characters. And on top of that, it is very hard for Junkrat to fight a hero that's far away, and so on. He has many weaknesses but he is very fun to play. This weaknesses part in particular is the important thing here. And what Junkrat shows very well with this graph is that if a hero has a fairly obvious weakness, you can exploit that weakness. For Junkrat in particular, you can see that from about gold to grandmasters, people do kind of realize this and are able to shut down Junkrat, hence why he's not played as much because he just doesn't do as well. Truth is that he doesn't even do that well in bronze, but this is an important lesson to learn from Junkrat's graph here, that finding popular heroes in your skill tier, shutting them down and exploiting their weaknesses is something that you should be doing. Sure, playing a hero that you feel comfortable with and just trying to grind out a bunch of SR is kind of fun I guess, at least if you're doing well, but it can be very tiring and sometimes it is a good thing to just take a step back like this. Just have a look at the big picture and try and figure out what exactly you could be doing in your skill tier. These sort of tips and the way I look at these graphs here is something that I hope can at least help some of you guys to identify what you should be doing to start climbing again. We're moving on though to tank hero usage now, and this is a very important one for me because the graphs are all over the place. To give you a quick rundown, D.Va is very good right now, she performs extremely well due to her kit being fairly simplistic overall, but very, very strong. We've already talked about Reinhardt dipping and why exactly that is, but as you can see, from about bronze to gold, you shouldn't really be afraid of playing him at all. You can't see it in this graph, but even in platinum, Reinhardt's win rate is actually over 50% still, so he's doing alright. Orisa and Rodok are still trying 
trying to find their place. But this is an important one right here, Winston. Winston's graph just goes up and up and up. And I already said that this was due to high skill cap heroes, but in this case, it's not really just that. Winston is a hero who has to work well with his team. He has to engage with his team, and that's how Winston performs. Communication and coordination does get better and better as you get higher and higher up, because people figure out where they should be, what their role is in their current lineup and with their team, so Winston does better. Now this is definitely not to say that you can't play Winston in lower tiers because of uncoordinated teams. However, when you pick Winston, you really have a responsibility to try and figure out what to do and to almost lead the charge. Alright, fantastic. With that out of the way and Winston's graph explained, I also just want to highlight that this is going to be thrown around a lot when one, Doomfist is added into the game, 2. Rodog receives his rumored defensive buffs, and 3. Other changes to heroes like Sari, for example, go through. Alright, as the tanks definitely have a lot of highs and lows here, they have a little bit more set roles and are therefore easier to explain, so I'm going to move on to the last category, supports. We've already talked about Mercy's overall domination. In this graph you can obviously see a massive drop-off in Grandmasters, mostly due to how good people are at Tracer and Genji who can chase down Mercy's, so hence why she drops off a lot up there. This is why this graph looks this way, and when it comes to playing supports, a very important thing for the different skill tiers is to play a support that you are comfortable with. Most of the supports work fairly well in most scenarios right now, as in on attack or defense and in different skill tiers, with the standout ones if you look at these graphs being Symmetra and Ana. Symmetra and Ana sort of have a bit of a reverse one here. Ana going up and up and up, and Symmetra going down, 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 as you progress through the skill tiers. Symmetra is, again, in a kind of similar spot to Junkrat, I guess you could say, and with a similar weakness too, that she is just not very good at range. If you take range on a Symmetra, it's quite easy to tear down her defense and tear down the Symmetra. People exploit this weakness, and as you go up and up in the tiers, the Symmetra usage and win rate as well goes down and down. Okay, so what can we take away from the support graph overall just to try and sum this one up? Well, the main thing here is that Mercy is still doing very well. There's no reason to really stop playing her, unfortunately I almost want to say, unless you're at a very high skill tier. It's not that I don't like Mercy as a hero, but we all know that the game gets a little bit samey when it's the same hero over and over. The main thing though is that finding a support that you are comfortable with, that you feel fits your playstyle is very important, just due to how these supports scale. If you are just playing Mercy, you may very well make it into Master and maybe even Grand Master, but after that it's gonna get extremely tough for you. This is when I again want to just highlight the fact that being versatile with your hero picks in Overwatch is both fun and useful. All the clips that I've shown throughout this video have been me playing these heroes for the first time in a while, and actually in quick play, just to get a better feel for all these different heroes that I don't normally play. I wanted to make this video just to sort of quickly remind people of how many heroes there are in Overwatch, how you can use them to get through the different skill tiers, because it makes a game that I've been playing for quite a while now just a lot more fun. And we all like winning as well, right? Anyway, I'm gonna have to end the video there. I'm sorry that this video has been a little bit different from the normal videos, but I do hope you guys enjoyed it. Leave a like on the video if you liked it, and I mean dislike it if you disliked it, because I'd love to know regardless, to be honest. All right, thanks again for watching. Do subscribe for more Overwatch content. I hope the overall summary and the overall tips in this video have been useful. I highly encourage you to go and check these graphs out yourself over at omnicmeta.com. Sure, they will change with Doomfist's addition to the game, but I still hope that a video like this is useful to at least some of you. Right, thanks again for watching, take care, and until next time, see ya.